Well, start with start with uh, Drake Callender first because um, he did get called into camp for the national team last year, even though the statistics were not great down the stretch. Um, basically, after the League's Cup, where he was standing on his head, mm-hmm. um, he ended up playing behind a team that was exhausted and did not really have the depth. So the numbers went up a little bit, but Greg Berhalter still saw the potential, called him into camp, did not play. However, he's one of only two major league soccer players who have been called into the U.S. national team for their upcoming match uh, against Jamaica in, in Nations League play. And there's a chance he might get his first cap there. So he's still in the picture for Burhalter, which means he's still in the picture for the World Cup 2026. He is not a perfect keeper, but he has a lot of the tools. The question perhaps is the focus and the mentality um, communication kind of falls into that. I've noticed a little bit better communication this year, especially in the last game against Nashville, letting his defenders know what to expect and what's happening. I heard him scream out to Busquets once when there was pressure coming from behind. Uh, and if he didn't, maybe it's stolen away and uh, the goal is scored and that's a different ball game. But he, he's made a couple of mistakes like he did against Montreal, mm. but then he bounces back and has a phenomenal game uh, against Nashville when it really mattered. So this is a guy that if he learns from his mistakes, he has all the tools that's in his hands. Calendar in some ways is in a similar situation. And I'd say similar to some of the other Academy kids that are kind of coming up, he's having to bide his time in a, almost an internship or mentorship uh, position where you have Noah Allen and Jordi Alba, you have Ben Hakramaski and, and Messi himself. David Ruiz jumped into that equation as well with a Busquets. And now Redondo, even though he's coming in with a name, is going to learn a ton playing next to Sergio. Um, Campana is playing with arguably the premier striker of his era, and that's Luis Suarez. There's good and bad in that. <laughs> the bad is you're going to be spending a lot of time on the bench watching, um, at least – as much as Luis can play. The good thing is at 37, there's going to be a few more opportunities than there would have been uh, when Luis was 27. So he's got to step up and today would be one of those days. I I would say we've seen the good and bad. Uh, The Montreal game was a little rough. And I think the first touch left a bit to be desired, especially in the first half. But in the second half, he came alive. He stayed focused against Nashville. Similar story uh, when he was able to come in. He's got to do almost the, the Robert Taylor stuff. He's got to make the effort. And then when the opportunities arise, um, he needs to capitalize. He reminds me a little bit of almost like a, a Juan Pablo Angel uh, in, in the way that he plays. He's not a, a bruiser. He's more of a thinking man's forward. He's got the size. He's got some good touches. Maybe needs to improve on his off foot a little bit because in the Nashville game or might have been Montreal, I think he had three chances with his off foot, um, but wasn't able to to capitalize. Defenders at this level know what you want to do, and they will shut that down. And until you can show them that you're capable of doing something else, uh, which in some ways then opens a ton of doors because they're not sure what to expect. But if, if they know what to expect, Nine times out of ten, they're going to make it impossible. Um, and of course, then again, uh, you do have the generational talents like a Lionel Messi where it doesn't matter. He'll find a way anyway. Uh, Campana is not that player, but he could be a better player if he keeps his eye on Suarez and then uh, puts his nose to the grindstone, does the extra work, and basically just becomes the best Leo Campana he can. 